have such sights to show you. Popping a scary horror podcast here. I'm your host, Colin. With me, as always, I have my good friend and co host, Aaron. Aaron, welcome back, buddy. Hey, good to be back. All right, absolutely. Have a good uh, camping trip free of any uh, Jason Voorhees running around. Nope. The only time I got my blood drawn was from ticks. Yeah, that really ticks me off. <laughs> <laughs> um,. Speaking of, you know what really grinds my gears? Yeah, yeah. Uh, the Baba Duke, yes. but it's not for the reason you think. So, whenever the Baba Duke came out, this is like my personal history with mm-hmm. it. It came out like 2014, and people would just not stop talking about it. Like mm-hmm. I heard about it constantly, and it was like one of those things that almost like a sense of rebellion. Like I'm not gonna watch it because everybody's talking about <laughs> it, right? You know, because that makes sense, whatever. But you know, now that things have cooled down a bit, you know, it's like still people. Uh, referred to Babadook as a good film Mm -hmm. years later even but I mean aside from that I don't know too much about it I know there's Babadook and that's about it (laughs) I don't don't even know I just know that that they're like a a LGBTQ plus icon like a drag icon yes slay Babadook that's like the only things I've seen about the Babadook I haven't even seen like the trailer or anything yeah yeah I mean that's the only good thing Netflix has ever done for society (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> is make an LGBTQ uh, icon for the horror community. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Although it's completely unintentional. It, it's just a Netflix thing to do. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Unintentionally doing something good. <laughs> <laughs> Whoopsies. Yeah, but I don't really know too much about it. So I'm kind of going in a little bit skeptical about yeah. how much I'll like it, but I'm not going to scrutinize it as heavily as I would years ago, whatever people were talking nonstop right. about it. It was just the talk of the town. Like. Yes, the very talk of the town. So we will be uh, getting out of here to uh, check out the uh, Babadook, Babadook and see what the hullabaloo is about. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Woo. Dookie. Babadook. Gabago. Over here. And we have just come back from watching the Babadook. 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 <laughs> Anyways, uh, so, um, I don't know how about you feel, man, but definitely glad I didn't watch this, uh, nine years ago, because I would have definitely not given it the chance or time of day oh, for yeah, it. Yeah, I guess um, so. But, having said that, watching it nine years later, uh, I don't hate it, but I definitely have some issues with it. It is very much a mixed bag for me. Oh, interesting. hmm Yeah, how about you? Um, yeah, I liked it. It definitely seemed a little... It had, like, an indie vibe, I guess, maybe. Yes. Um, it was cool. I can see why it kind of caught on popularity in the sense that Mm -hmm. I feel like it was a very suspenseful, scary kind of movie. So if you're in it for the ooh factor, you know, if you're Mm. in it for the who was gonna happen, um, then yeah, yeah, I was spooked. I was pretty thoroughly spooked through most of that movie, um... Yeah, I thought the concept was creative and, and interesting, but uh, yeah, I mean, not a, it's not a, not a masterpiece by any means. Yeah, but yeah, I thought it was good. Well, that's good. I'm I'm glad it 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 definitely is going to be a little bit of a difference from what it sounds like on uh, our sides. Which honestly, that's my favorite kind of episodes mm-hmm. is where we're kind of more on opposite sides of the spectrum there. Yeah. So. Uh, I guess we'll just talk about the premise of the Baba Duke, which uh, the Baba Duke focuses on a single mother and her child, uh, Amelia and Samuel, mm-hmm. who um, basically have been to live together by themselves whenever she loses her husband in a car accident mm-hmm. uh, early, early on. And as it continues on there, uh, she's trying her best to be the best mom she can be, even though Samuel is unruly and everything. Mm -hmm. And it isn't until one of the nights where Samuel pulls a book for her to read 
as a bedtime story where he pulls out this book called The Baba Duke. Mm-hmm. And from there, uh, she reads about this terrifying uh, creature known as the Baba Duke, um, who basically haunts children and threatens to uh, kill and eat them. You know, mm-hmm. all, all the good, fun fairy tale stuff you hear in Days of Yore. But uh, as the film continues on, the line between fact and fiction uh, starts to blur a lot as uh, they both start experiencing uh, supernatural things. Or Mm -hmm. is it all in her head? Man, I I, I sound like freaking Rod Sterling or some crap like, (laughs) is it all in their heads or is it something from the twilight zone <laughs> some some crap like that yeah well, honestly this is a little i mean not super twilight mm-hmm. zony but it's a little bit like that where you know i think there's like a, a moral and a message or a, i guess mm-hmm. at least deeper stuff going on yeah yeah um i think story-wise overall i mean it's pretty i i have zero complaints with i feel like it's uh a good idea you know focusing on just this uh character and everything and i like the fact that for the most part the baba duke it's not the reason you want to watch it it's just one of the other things in the mix yeah i Mm. I do think that's something i thought was interesting and i kind of liked about this movie is there is like a compelling story about this woman her child Mm -hmm. she's just trying to make it as a single mother she's frazzled and uh she's also ridden with with grief and can, can't answer, you know, her kids, very straightforward, blunt kids' questions about, you know, um, about her dad or, like, why other kids don't like him and stuff. So she's really struggling, and that's kind of the main mm-hmm. story. And then also, creepy children's book monster is here. Yeah, yeah. Um, definitely zero qualms with um, the plot, I suppose, of the story. I think it's definitely uh, very well done. Um, talking about the characters, I mean, really, there's like technically three main characters and a lot of, uh, well, I say a lot, there's a few side characters, mm-hmm. but talking about the leading lady, we have, uh, Essie Davis playing Amelia Vanek. Mm-hmm. Um, and I feel like she is definitely throwing her all into the role there. Like she yeah. has a lot of physically demanding stuff she has to do mm-hmm. just with her voice and emotions and everything so i think she definitely does a very very good job and in all honesty while watching it even if i didn't agree with character development and decisions there i felt like she took the script and just did exactly like you know went beyond what the script asked her to do basically so major kudos yeah i thought she knocked it out of the park there's definitely times where she was like unrecognizable as the character she Mm -hmm. was in the start of the film because like as the film goes on she gets less and less sleep and more and more stressed you know and and it's yeah and if you just took a screenshot from the end of the film and then like the very beginning where she's all dolled up for work i feel like they're just like wow those are the same actress that's crazy but Mm -hmm. yeah but i think she does a very good job and um honestly don't have any qualms i mean it's just good good job overall Mm -hmm. there um and jumping over to uh, the leading man, I suppose, is uh, Noah Wiseman playing uh, Samuel. And I feel like, again, for being a child actor, I had to Google it. He was six whenever he did this film. Uh-huh. And for a six-year-old, I feel like he did a very, very good job Oh yeah. there. Um, the only issue I have, and I think this comes more with the way the story is written out, I feel like with what the plot requires they almost get to like high levels of extreme because towards Mm -hmm. the beginning of the film the kid is just basically a nightmare yeah kind of you know just very hyperactive everything um i I made a joke to aaron kind of saying like okay this is a real horror movie here (laughs) i'm just trying to deal with that and i understand that i i don't even think it's the uh actor's fault at all i feel like that's just kind of what the director and the writer of the story wanted i think and i can kind of mention this because we've already talked about uh, amelia as a character i feel like whenever it comes to their performances 
they are so immediately strong and bombastic mm-hmm. with certain emotions and feelings and then in rubber bands in opposite directions sometimes. Mm-hmm. Like I feel like whereas um, Amelia is a crescendo, Samuel's like a decrescendo, if that makes sense there, mm-hmm. where they're like super big at that moment, but then as the film goes on, they almost swap uh-huh. with like how loud they are there. And I don't have an issue with kind of over the top certain stuff like that. One film that kept popping up into my mind that I kind of couldn't help but draw comparisons to was The Shining, Mm -hmm. in a sense. that I feel like they both have some similar tones, especially when it comes to being a uh, parent Mm -hmm. there. Mm -hmm. And I, I drew a lot of stuff from that there. As well as the fact that, you know, they're both similar in the fact that it just starts to sink more and more into madness as the film progresses on there. Oh, which yeah. is not bad. I don't feel like any film, you know, it's like, oh, Shining did it. You know, you can't do it, you know. Right. I don't, it, I don't even yeah. think it was, you know, super original, that that basic of a concept. No, when, no, when, for when sure. Shining did it, yeah. But uh, yeah, I, I definitely see what you mean where. And there's also that mm-hmm. element of like, okay certain parts of this are definitely entering reality, but like how much of it is real and how much is in there. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And that was the other thing as well, because I, I, I guess we could talk more about in spoilers there, but I did have a lot of that question of how much of this is reality versus a uh, fantasy, right. you know, the supernatural, like how, where is the line there? Mm-hmm. And, uh, towards the end of the film, I pretty much sure we got a freaking good answer on that. I'd say so. Yeah. yeah. But even then, and this is something I guess we could talk about in spoilers. Even then mm-hmm. there is a question of like, is it all in her head? I mean, like there's mm-hmm. definitely parts, it, again, just like the shining, there's definitely parts yeah. that enter reality, but to, to what extent was that? caused yes. by psychosis you know? exactly exactly but that being said um I, I i guess my issue with samuel is i think the story they're trying to tell and the messages and the feelings and emotions they're trying to do you have to go all out on that but yeah. because you have to go out on that it does kind of sacrifice a little bit of the me believing it a tiny bit because Mm -hmm. like samuel is just like a pure kind of kid from hell scenario there which you know i don't feel bad talking about because it's blatantly first obvious when you see him first on the scene he's a handful yeah yeah Yeah, super handful there but then as the film um progresses on later he is so much more minimized a little bit there and quite and that could be due to his state of mind as well i think it's a lot of that Mm -hmm. and i think there are some details of that we could talk about in spoilers but i think for Mm -hmm. the first part of the film he's you know he's dealing with stuff at school and he's scared of monsters and Mm -hmm. this book isn't helping anything and you know he has kind of that kind of stuff going on and then i feel like because he and his mother are so close-knit as his mom starts going off the deep end he starts getting into like protective mode because he says that all the time throughout the movie. He's Mm -hmm. like, I'll protect you, mom. I, he like feels necessary for her safety, Mm -hmm. which is weird for a kid to feel, but it's normal when you realize he lost his dad and he's afraid of losing his mom because he don't really have anybody else in his life. Mm -hmm. So he, I think feel like he like when duty calls, he steps up is, Mm -hmm. is is part of that. So he kind of calms down to take care of his mom who starts going off the deep end with the Babadook stuff as that progresses. Yeah. Yeah. And speaking of which, how about we talk about the, Baba Duke when it comes to uh, being a horror icon as mm-hmm. well as how the Baba Duke's performance was in this film, which is kind of hard to quantify given that yeah. really it's not even the centralized focus. There's a lot of foreshadowing to the Baba Duke right. before it arrives. I think it's really interesting. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe do a little bleep if I can't say this in spoilers or cut this part out. I don't. Yeah. I don't know. I thought it was interesting because the Baba Duke, even though he's like the villain, it's like you don't necessarily see him all the time Mm because he like possesses people, you know? It becomes like Mm -hmm. an exorcist kind of situation. So like there's definitely scenes with the Baba Duke that are super scary, Mm -hmm. but then it's like uh, a lot of the times when he's actually doing things, he's like in 
on Yulia, you know what I mean? Yeah, I, I think I, I could see why you thought that was a spoiler there mm -hmm. um, a little bit. And I, I feel torn because I feel like that's right on the threshold of spoiler yeah, territory. I don't, I don't but know. again, so, but yeah, that's kind of the mystery because I didn't know what exactly the Baba Duke was going to entail when it came to its presence right. and how it attacked. Because he's definitely a monster and he definitely is there and attacks, but he's not, <laughs> he does exist in that sort of uh, mm -hmm. Nightmare on Elm Street realm or something where it's like, is he here or is he in their head? You mm -hmm. know what I mean? When, even when he's on screen, it's not sure. Can everybody see him? Can only just one person see him? You know, or, uh, and then, you know, a lot of the times when, when actions are being caused by the Baba Duke, it's like, uh, mm -hmm. you know, it's coming through click. And I thought, I think the reason for that mm -hmm. is because the Baba Duke even though he's like, yeah, scary children's book and he's a monster and he's the, you're supposed to be scared of the monster. Simultaneously, I think the film wants the Duke to represent like grief, like mm -hmm. Amelia's grief and she's doing these horrible things because it's grief and because it, all this stuff centers around Samuel's birthday, which is the day that her husband died. It all, it all focuses mm -hmm. around her husband. Even the Duke takes the form of her husband sometime. Yeah, uh, yeah. So it's like, I feel like it's supposed to be her grief, and therefore, of course, everybody can't see it, because only she can see it sometimes, and only Sam can see it sometimes, because they're both so distraught over the death of mm -hmm. her husband slash his dad, but, you know, at the same time, it is also Scary Monster on the cover of the movie, so. Yeah, it's, it's weird, man, it's weird, because, like, whenever it comes to the idea of the Babadook, I actually do like it. Mm -hmm. I actually really dig the idea and i was really whenever it came to it again this is kind of getting close to uh spoiler territory but whenever it came to what the baba duke represented and everything else mm -hmm. i dug that i was like that's a cool idea yeah. i like it a lot it's just where it ended up going towards the end of the film that i'm like okay we're going a little too far Interesting. I, I think we're going a little bit too far if for my liking there but again maybe it's just like you know whenever you s set up expectations for the film while you're watching it and then if it doesn't hit it there that mm -hmm. you're like mm, okay I guess where you... it's not necessarily bad or anything yeah. um one thing i will say i do think design wise it's very iconic yeah you know yeah. they they talk about a lot of times how you see like the shadowy hat man you know mm -hmm. Again, that's where kind of like part of the inspiration for Nightmare on Elm Street came in there. So I think that's good. And uh, the one thing I do have to applaud with the film is the book itself that it's found. Those yeah, artistic yeah. drawings, I mean, they're just very eye-catching and mm -hmm. everything. Mm -hmm. I dug it. I love it. I, mean, mm -hmm. I do think they kind of masterfully did like this could be a children's book, but mm -hmm. it's also a little bit off. You know what I mean? And it's not like so mm -hmm. blatant where it's just like blood on the pages. Like mm -hmm. you're reading it whenever they're first reading it, you know what I mean? So yeah. it's definitely one of those things where it's like, yeah, I could see this actually being a book you picked up on the shelf and being like, that's a little weird for children, mm -hmm. but like not think about it any further than that. I, I thought they did a great job of creating that book because mm -hmm. it's, it, yeah. it is very much like a children's book and it's like almost appropriate for children but it's all, also almost not like i would not want to read this to my child yes exactly that's exactly it um i feel like that's definitely uh very accurate it is believable there in a sense my the, the book comes into question like it started adding to it for me though mm -hmm. on like how did the book get there right you know because obviously she tries to look for like publication author anything and of course it's not there right, right. it just literally says Baba Duke on the red cover there and just has the same pages as well as having a few blank pages which I thought was a nice touch which mm -hmm. is developed on later basically right. uh, but I did like it a ton um that's that was honestly probably <laughs> as sad as it sounds probably one of my favorite things about this film that i'm like yes mm -hmm. i like this film this was a good decision there um the director i'm, I'm already forgetting her name uh, local australian native uh jennifer kent did a very good job with the art direction there yeah. just kind of pointing out what exactly she wanted there uh, cause that was just the most eye catching thing. And as she continued to go back to the book there and like new additions you see and changes everything, I'm like, mm -hmm. yeah, I'm all for this there. Yeah. I also, I love how they kind of like 
splice him in with like old monster movies mm-hmm. and like show him um you know when he does appear he's kind of jittery and blah, 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 and you know unreal in a sense um yeah. so i love how they portray him as like you know even when you're looking straight at him he's never like quite materialized he is like that shadow in the corner you know? yeah I, I think they do a good job because you do it's not just like one like design of the Baba Duke. it mm-hmm. is multiple and used in various different ways like whether it's like flipping through like the channel seeing mm-hmm. old movies with his design there just some clothes in the corner yeah like a coat on the wall yeah, yeah. which always freaks me the crap out there mm-hmm. so I think that's good there were some times where the Baba Duke was presented in a certain way that I'm like, I can't take this seriously. It's a little yeah. too silly for I, me. I kind of dug that though because he's like a children's mm-hmm. book character, and it says even mm-hmm. in there like, look how silly he looks or whatever, and he is mm-hmm. sort of simultaneously really silly and kind of terrifying at the same time. Mm, that's a good point. Yeah, I, I have to, I have to just give you the point on that one there. <laughs> he just he gives me salad finger vibes, is what he gives. Yes, me. <laughs> yes, definitely salad fingers uh, for sure. Um, so I think it definitely is a good representation. Not to mention how. The design is incorporated later, especially as it starts to affect uh, Samuel and mm-hmm. Amelia. So I think that's definitely good. I mean, we could talk about the other side characters, but really I feel like they're just kind of there. Like, this is this is Samuel and Amelia's film. Right. Uh, and the other people are just kind of adding spice to the story. Uh, yeah, I absolutely agree with that. I mean, I guess mm-hmm. just really quickly, that she has like an, an Auntie Claire, you know, mm-hmm. and her sister Claire, and then they have a daughter that's around the same age. Um, and they kind of get into a tiff as, as Samuel becomes more mm-hmm. and more erratic and her daughter becomes more and more fucking mean to him. Uh, yeah kids are cruel what can you say and then uh and then there's that dude that's uh, at her robbie work. yeah robbie that, that was i thought that was going somewhere and it just dropped it, did, it, it did. just straight dropped like you think it's going somewhere and i'm sorry to spoil it it doesn't yeah, yeah like he you... gets one look at her kid and is like yep i'm out <laughs> yeah like never mind <laughs> see ya <laughs> this is a bad this is bad vibes all around <laughs> um come back later yeah and you know i get why they did that in a sense just to kind of exemplify the fact that sh- amelia kind of feels like a prisoner a little bit due yeah. to her child's decision so while i do think there was a point to it i was also kind of shocked that it was just like <laughs> yeah he also kind of drops i think the last thing that's like said to him mm-hmm. is from samuel that's like my mom says i'm not allowed to have a dad or something yeah and so i feel like his character is almost just a device to be like she also can't move on from the death yeah. because of her kid and then you know yeah i i yeah and i think that just again plays into the thing i said earlier where samuel is so like loud and just doing these insane things to kind of more so exemplify how Amelia's feeling mm. and then the tone starts to shift there to kind of show how Samuel's feeling and while I think it is a good thing to do you do kind of sacrifice sucking me in and believing it because like toward again I think that was and I think it's a me problem I'm pretty sure where like the kid was so just erratic mm. and just spastic and everything that I was just like oh my gosh this is like a kid from hell basically <laughs> that's what having kids is yeah like. yeah especially when you have a kid and yeah. you have to work and you don't really have a support system for him and so he starts mm-hmm. acting out and that snowballs no. everything because the kids at school don't want to be friends with the weird kids yeah and you really need we you really need friends if you're the weird yeah. kid you know and but I, but i will say again like just to play i guess devil advocate to myself i suppose i feel like in a sense it it almost seems like they have to be that way like their characters in a storybook because you know Mm -hmm. you know a storybook you have like 15 to 20 pages tops Mm -hmm. to like tell a story and usually you do have to be strong with the character who they are and everything and especially if you look around their house which is like the grays and whites it is like Mm -hmm. a dark depressing house matches kind of the same color palette as the baba duke novel i noticed yeah Yeah, especially the dark shadows like the whites and the Mm -hmm. grays i mean it is a freaking depressing house (laughs) like even gomez and morticia would be bummed out (laughs) i am i think a lot of that's the point is it's this Mm -hmm. sort of 
is this little cave of depression that she lives in Mm because she still can't get past her husband's death and her child is a reminder every day that her husband is dead because their birth his birthday is on the same day as his death or whatever Mm -hmm. yeah um aside from that man is there anything else we could talk about before spoiling i mean i know we've had like slight like hints of spoilery i guess already yeah. happening because it's just so hard to kind of talk about it without right. digging into so, it so much of the bulk of the film deals with that kind of stuff but mm. um yeah i don't think so like the neighbor's a cute character the neighbor with parkinson's yes or whatever her name is yeah uh, she she was a nice addition mm-hmm. i feel like she's helpful and she does come into the plot a little bit every now and then there's even one scene that I kind of liked where, I, you know, Amelia gets to just peer out her window into her life and her neighbor's life because she can see her in her living room from there. And so there's like a couple scenes where she's like washing dishes or something and she can see out her kitchen window into her neighbor's house. And I like as stuff starts to go downhill, there's one scene where she like sees the Baba Duke in her house and she like drops the plate and it's like, ah! And, mm-hmm. and then of course she looks again and it's gone. And um, I don't know, it's one of those things where... I like that it's an example of she can peer into someone else's life and be like, I wish I was them. And then, um, and then, you know, even then her grief or the Babadook or whatever you want to call it will appear and, and, uh, Mm -hmm. sink its teeth in. But yeah. Um, yeah, definitely, definitely good to, uh, notate the, uh, neighbor. Cause I do think it is kind of like a nice addition because really nobody is really that nice to Amelia or Samuel Mm -hmm. because, you know, again, it was mostly Samuel that's driving people away with his actions and everything else. And then it's just kind of like Amelia's kind of shortness that also drives other people away. Right. And kind of manic state. So it is nice to have like one supportive character since, again, Robbie is just like, yeah, yeah. you know, there. Um, the only other thing I would say is there are hints, you know, because again, the film definitely toys with the idea of how much of this is reality there there are some moments that i question like it is way too gosh darn like specific there like uh them eating the porridge or whatever there yeah yeah i'm I'm just wondering how that happened and everything and so then i guess that might be answered later you know just uh... due to them kind of answering I mean, that's, if you mm-hmm. remember, the, the the very first scene mm-hmm. is her, like, having a nightmare about the car crash mm-hmm. where her husband dies, and there's just glass flying everywhere, mm-hmm. and then the first, like, incident of Baba Dukery is the glass in her porridge or whatever, mm-hmm. which I feel like is just to reaffirm that, you know, this is uh, uh, about her grief and her suffering mm-hmm. about her husband or whatever, but yeah, um, it's, it is a question of, like, does... I because because d- yeah. does Samuel even actually see it? Because it's just her and Samuel at the table uh-huh. while she's eating, and she says, "Don't eat that; I'll make something else." But she, and she as she pulls the glass from her teeth, but he doesn't actually be like, "That's glass," or what? He doesn't like reference it. He's just uh-uh. like, "Are you okay, mom?" Kind of thing. Yeah. Um, and she digs that glass out of the back of her tooth, and then she spins the rest of the movie like digging into yeah. the tooth or whatever, where mm-hmm. she where she cut herself with the glass. But so, and I think it's just. Honestly, that's almost ripped straight from uh, Castaway. You ever seen Castaway with Tom Hanks? Oh, the skate, yeah. Yeah, and he has he's got like a toothache the whole time because that's about the grief of like losing his wife or whatever <laughs> because he's cast away on this island and mm-hmm. his wife is having an affair with the dentist and so he like cuts the tooth out because yeah, it has been too dang long <laughs> since I've seen Castaway. Right, like, it's probably been twenty years. I forgot him. <laughs> well, again, the first time I watched that movie, yeah, I, I was a kid and I didn't get like the second meeting, but the second time I watched it, I think I was in college and I was like, oh, like he's he is literally cast away on this island. But the whole thing is about being, like, cast away from his marriage. It's falling apart because he hasn't been, like, like focusing on it. Got That's it. why the movie is a two words. Because castaway is one word if you are a castaway as a noun. But he was cast away. It's a verb. But, um, well, holy crap. Anyway. I think I need to pop in that movie there. <laughs> anyway, if you guys don't remember that movie, he has a toothache on the island, like, the whole time. <laughs> and because his wife's fucking a dentist. And he... <laughs> <laughs> and he finally cuts the tooth out and then, you know, he's like a pro at surviving after that or whatever because he cut his grief out. It's kind of, it's almost the same thing but the opposite where she gets toothache because the upcoming anniversary of her, of her husband's death is coming up. She cut her tooth on the glass or whatever. And then when the Babadook's here, she like rips out that tooth and is like, ah, you know. 
Anyway. Well, we're going to watch Castaway next episode. <laughs> it's not a horror movie, but I'm going to make it one. <laughs> horror of survival horror, sure. It's a pretty decent film. Yes, I, I will be sure to check it out now. <laughs> it's been too long. I need to visit Tom Hanks uh, again. <laughs> Anyways, yeah, let's let's talk about our ratings for the uh, Baba Duke. So, Baba Duke. of course... <laughs> You say that too perfectly. I'm, I'm, I'm going to let you go first, buddy. <laughs> I love saying this movie more than I love watching it. <laughs> That's because it's a fun word to say, the Babadook. Mm-hmm. I love that because, honestly, going into this movie, I was like, this is going to be... This just has a, such a silly name. How am I going to take something called the Babadook seriously? But, of course, it's silly because it's like, silly children's book, but it's not really. There's something sinister. Um, I like the concept. We've talked about it a little bit. I like the concept of this monster is really... Her grief, she is the monster because she's turning into someone she doesn't recognize and doing horrible things um, because she's just at her wit's end and she hasn't been sleeping and blah, blah, blah. Um, I like the concept. I do agree with Cole, and we can talk about this more in spoilers. There are moments, details that start to maybe push it off the rail a little bit um, one way or another where I'm like, okay, is this still the focus of the movie? Or did that thing actually happen? Or are we really just going to gloss over that um, little detail? But um, overall, I thought it was a, um, a strong theme that they delivered on pretty well. I thought it was pretty relentlessly suspenseful. I found myself being like, ooh, look away from the screen um, at many points during this film. And I, I really do like the representation of the Babadook with the claws and him, you know, hovering over and being in darkness and being everywhere. Um, yeah, yeah, you know, spooky. Uh, I do think the film, yeah, has a few shortfalls here and there um, with little plot details and uh, uh, just in the ways that some things are represented that we could talk about more in spoilers. But um, overall, enjoyable movie, very spooky movie. Um, Definitely glad we didn't watch it, you know, like at midnight or something, because I had to go to bed right after this. <laughs> I probably would be trembling. Um, but yeah, this is like a 6 out of 10 for me. Yeah, that's above average. Okay, yeah. I, I, I can I could see that and respect that there. Mm-hmm. Um, I, obviously, just a pre-spoiler for my rating, it's definitely going to be lower than a 6 for me. Only because, again... There are things that I really like about this film and things that I just really don't like about this film. For instance, I love the idea of her dealing with this grief and it kind of becoming a monster on its own. Mm -hmm. That being said, by the point we get towards the end of the film, I was just lost and I was just like doing this where I think it went too hard. Mm -hmm. I think it went way too balls to the wall, sort of like bam right there. Um, but like I said, I feel like it does have a good message and kind of good representation when it comes to grief, depression, you know, and just how you have feel senses of sadness, anger, sleeplessness, just everything. And especially having to parent uh, somebody you associate with your spouse's death. Mm -hmm. And I feel like those are amazing, great themes. And I only bring it up now because I do believe that if you really are interested in an idea like this and everything else, you should definitely give it a watch there. It is uh, definitely kind of plays well to the horror aspect when it comes to like especially the Baba Duke's design because mm-hmm. again I, I talked about it before you've seen like that pile of clothes in the corner and how it just looks monstrous how shadows are cast and everything and it just you know can get to you like that the thing that drives me away is just again how strong they try to push certain aspects of this film down your throat to where I'm just like man I, this this isn't fun or interesting or yeah. anything to me i feel like again like with how strong some of the characters are there's some moments where i feel like it's appropriate and other times it's like okay i get it yeah. i get it you're hammering it in to my skull but again this film should definitely still be watched however all of that being said um i feel like it's going to be probably at least a 4.5 like I and you know I'm I feel like four's too harsh and too low for it. Five, I just think it's a little below average for me in the sense. If 
and again maybe it's something of my fault because you know i was like oh man they're really going with this aspect are you going to do and where the hell are you going with this film Mm -hmm. kind of like that but there's still a lot of good stuff about this film even though i rate it low it's not like a just skip this film just don't watch it definitely especially if the themes interest you and obviously you don't mind a little spookiness there it's definitely worth a watch just for me towards the end i feel like there are other films that have kind of dealt with subjects similar to this that i prefer a little bit more there but still overall um like i said trust me i'm glad i waited till the hype died down around this film because if i had watched it then it would have been even more critical Mm. of it at the time but Mm -hmm still good still good so just kind of you know Aaron 6 my 4.5 there that's kind of where we stand at so let's talk more about uh some of the spoilers in this film because there's definitely a lot to dig up spoilers (laughs) (laughs) yeah you know Babadook Babadook? (laughs) yeah Babadook (laughs) am I wrong huh Oh gosh, yeah. I'll let you go ahead and talk first, buddy, because I know there's a lot of points you want to talk um, about. This is one that I feel like maybe we should start at the end. Mm-hmm. Uh, yes. Well, okay. I guess I guess we still have to explain it, but I guess the the major spoiler is the Baba Duke doesn't go anywhere at the end. It lives in their basement now. It's that was just so weird. <laughs> that was one of the things that drove me nuts because I felt like the Baba Duke would have been more powerful. Mm-hmm. If it was like, it could have been supernatural, mm-hmm. you know, I, it, it's just living in the basement. I guess like the only way I can understand why they would do this is the fact that she's still dealing with her grief and depression right. and she has a place where it's locked up and she knows she has to attend to it. Otherwise it just starts to lose control at everything. Yeah. So I could get it on like, a metaphorical like oh it's so symbolic this way right. it's just actuality of just like having a baba duke in the basement <laughs> feeding it worms and everything mm-hmm. i was just like oh, this is so silly like it, like obviously it wasn't to this level but like if you took it up like a couple of notches the baba duke might as well have just been sitting outside with seeing the kids magic tricks you yeah. know going, <laughs> <laughs> yes j- cool. clapping with his big clawed hands <laughs> i just i i thought at that point like i get what they're doing it's a little bit too silly <laughs> i could see it yeah i could see the criticism of it being a little mm-hmm. ham-fisted but yeah no it's definitely that it's like you know you can't really ever get rid of grief. And the book says, you know, you can't get rid of the Babadook, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, I thought there was going to be some sort of, like, answer where they're like, okay, if we don't think about it and don't see it anywhere, then it'll disappear or something. Because mm-hmm. it says, if you catch it, if you see it in a word or you catch it in a look, you can't get rid of the Babadook or something. Mm-hmm. And so I was like, oh, man, you just have to, like, forget all about it and move on, I guess, or something. But, um mm-hmm. No, I guess you got to tend to your grief, which I get is a better message. But it, yeah, again, it is a little weird that she has to like literally dig up worms and go feed the Baba Duke while it like attacks her, and then she fights it off. Yeah, yeah. it's it's like one of those things that again, and it could be alluding more to like feeling like a children's book, you know, where it's just like, and so they fed the Baba Duke in mm-hmm. order to satiate its thirst for blood. <laughs> there basically uh but it it's just it, it wasn't what i was expecting per se and the whole the whole confrontation scene where amelia confronts the baba duke and and it's in that room i feel like i feel like with the way they wrote it they're like oh yeah this is going to be a powerful scene and just by the point it got to there like stylistically i think it's cool seeing half the room like in pitch darkness and seeing like giant hands come out but i just didn't feel any tension or grief there Mm -hmm. yeah um yeah definitely because it's it's hard to tell what the rules for the babadook were at that point mm -hmm. because you kind of because it it establishes the monster with rules i feel like and then i feel like they don't matter you know what i mean yes exactly because it says like you know this and then it says uh it'll knock three times and then there's a rattle and that's how you know what's come in or whatever and and it's like okay so that leads to some scary moments at the beginning of the movie And then it says, you know, like, you can't get rid of it. And then it says, Mm -hmm. you know, you don't want to see what it looks like underneath. And, you know, and then they never show you what it looks like underneath, really. And they don't, I don't know. 
And then the extended version of the book says it gets under your skin and it shows her killing the dog and then killing her child and then killing herself. And you're like, okay, well, that's pretty straightforward. Yeah. <laughs> but, um, as far as like the rules, I don't know. Like, it's like a, it, it feels like they're going to be important in the beginning. Like, ah, there's got to be an answer of how to get rid of it. But they just kind of don't matter, I guess, in the end. But. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think that's definitely accurate there. And, you know, like by that point because like i said they're already going like over the top there because i felt like the real tension kind of took place whenever you know again earlier in the film there's like a scene where i assume the baba duke has now entered into amelia there mm -hmm. basically and she starts getting more hateful and violent which again i felt like was very much more quicker than I expected. Which, again, mm -hmm. the film's like an hour and a half, so I understand. Like, again, it's like, I get why they did what they did, just making these characters, like, super quick to their emotions there mm -hmm. and everything. And who knows? It could be just, like, you know, stuff she's bottled up, but then once the Baba 2 takes over, she's just now exploding mm -hmm. and everything else. But <laughs> there's a, like... <laughs> They, they have, like, this freaking Home Alone scene leading up yeah. to, like, that ending I was telling mm. you about there where, again, uh, she uh, she had just killed the dog, which is a funny scene in itself there. Well, I say it's funny right. because Aaron and I, we both had the same idea of whenever we saw the dog, <laughs> before the book even said anything, before anything happened, right. we were like, that dog's dying. That dog's There's no dying. way yeah. that dog is living there and so like each time it comes up and you know they did a good job with the dog progression where mm -hmm. i don't feel like they killed the dog instantly because no. there's definitely a lot of times where it's like the dog is pleasant and everything then like whenever the baba duke uh enters her the dog starts barking at amelia which makes sense because mm -hmm. it's like you know not familiar with it mm -hmm. kind of taking over and, uh, yeah. but amelia doesn't immediately go for the kill it's like it just building up building up right until finally um, she's just there trying to watch TV and the dog starts barking at her. She just, she does like what I would call like the Jim Carrey turn around mm -hmm. look like the, <sighs> yeah. And then she just starts chasing. That's when the Babadook is like fully in her. Yeah. Yes. And so then snaps the dog's neck and, uh, they do it as tastefully as possible there, mm -hmm. but it is funny just seeing like the dog just drop limp on the <laughs> ground. Yeah, it is. Um, limp. but it was just, I, again, and I think again, I just thought it was funny that I found it funny just mm -hmm. because we both knew at that moment that dog fucked up. And it's yeah. such a cute little white dog that's like, meh, 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 you know, it's uh -huh. like, you just knew it was going to die. And the very first scene you see of it is like, it like walks up to the little basement where she keeps all of the memories of her dead husband or whatever. Mm -hmm. And it's like barking at it or whatever. Cause the Baba Duke's down there or something, you know? And so it's like, uh, you just know that that dog knows what's up and, it can't live anymore. yes exactly and so whenever that happens you know she is now basically ready for her next blood because again mm -hmm. the baba duke has taken over and you know samuel has all these contraptions set up like all the weapons he had early in the film mm -hmm. come into play like and so i thought those were good setups there because i just bought him just creating this well, like literally he, he like knew yeah. this was coming too mm -hmm. yeah yeah because because yeah he would right before that scene was he on the mm -hmm. phone trying to call to be somewhere else mm -hmm. and then right before that was whenever she was like wakes up from a bad dream and she has a knife and she's hovering over mm -hmm. him and he's like mom <laughs> yeah and um I, I i know i'm getting off from the point of what i was trying to get to because i want to talk about why samuel is able to see the baba do mm -hmm. i i feel like i need to talk about that because that's something i'm not even entirely certain about but basically whenever she's chasing him down i do like the illusions that they've constantly talked about the story of the big bad wolf and the three little mm -hmm. pigs you mm -hmm. see the cartoon they read the story and everything and you know she makes reference to it again didn't help me to think about the shining but that's like again i'm not going to you know, be like, oh, they did in the shining <laughs> minus Actually, point. Yeah. yeah, no, I, I just found it funny. But I, I will give uh, kudos to <laughs> Baba Duke. I have never seen someone break down a door by grabbing the top door frame and just monkey kicking <laughs> the door in. I was like, oh my lord. Mm -hmm. That that was some craziness there. But 
whenever uh, she chases down and then she's tied down, like freaking Gulliver travel style there <laughs> on the ground. And, you know, she tries to choke Samuel and then she vomits the Baba Duke because, I don't know, was anything said in particular there or did she finally just win fighting back? I don't know. I think she. I think it was one of those. The power of love got through to her, or whatever. Yeah, kind of thing, because... that that I wasn't a big fan of there, and I was just like, hmm, okay, because that was, like at that moment of her vomiting blackness. That's whenever I knew, okay, this is supernatural. Mm-hmm. Clearly, this is supernatural. Everything could have at this point been in her head. There, minus you know glass shards there, because mm-hmm. obviously Samuel saw that there is glass there. Um. That was one of the defining ones that told me, okay, this is supernatural, clearly. Right. Um, and so then, like, whenever you're feeling better, and <laughs> Sam was like, the Baba Duke is here, and then flies up the stairs, supernatural <laughs> there. I'm just like, oh my gosh, where is this film going? Because mm-hmm. they just went all out. Like, once they confirmed, yep, this is supernatural, so watch some crazy stuff happen. Dragging a child upstairs, and then, like, almost having the kid sucked into the void. Mm-hmm. Like, that was just a little bit too much on the nose there. And trust me, I know I love me some camp, so yeah. I'm not above camp. It's just for the tonal of the story and everything else, it just kind of took me out of it there. Yeah, I can um, see that. And again, obviously, like, I, again, I keep talking about The Shining. The Shining definitely has some camp there, mm-hmm. but it's just weird how, in my mind, it almost works out. But I think there's, like, a level of campiness from the beginning, which is why yeah, there, as yeah. opposed to this film, it's very more strong and grounded at the beginning, which I guess is why it's such a jarring transition whenever it is kind of like... <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah, I think, mm-hmm. I don't know, I, I kind of bought it just because the Babadook, in every one of his appearances, was already kind of like cartoony almost, while That's also true, being yeah. terrifying. He kind of jitters around, mm-hmm. it reminded me of early internet cartoons, you know, where it's just like, bop, 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 you know, <laughs> instead of animating the in-between frame. You know? He was sort of goofy, and he was a children's book mm-hmm. character, but, you know, he just got progressively more terrifying, so yeah. I guess I didn't mind whenever he was getting flown across the room and stuff, mm-hmm. because the Babadook was trying to take him, but you couldn't necessarily see him you know yeah but uh no i get what you're saying it did kind of like feel like they just needed to build up to some big finale where they defeated the babadook mm-hmm. you know when that maybe it wasn't necessary um yes if it was so much of a symbol mm-hmm. and I, I i'm completely on board with the thought of like i do feel like the messages of like this is symbolic of a grief versus this is an actual supernatural character that's killing you um that was definitely became unfrayed at times yes and it was Mm -hmm. like okay which one am i supposed to be digging right now because when you're yelling at this thing in the void i'm like okay this is a real guy when when he's yelling rank yanking your children around and and throwing them and you're getting home alone style beat up by your kid (laughs) he stabs you in the leg and all that definitely happened because like you know, even in the end when they're like, oh, it's Sam's birthday, everything's nice. She's like walking with a limp and she's like, I got the stitches out. Ha ha. Like she definitely got stabbed in the leg. Her, their, their mm. dog is definitely not in the end of the movie. Like oh, all, all that shit happened. But... No, it, it, it's funny because especially like we see the dog at the very end buried underneath the ground, don't we? Like, oh, is that what they're I burying? thought that's what it, well, I thought it was like, that's where the dog was buried because mm-hmm. I saw like this white thing and a whole bunch of dirt and it raised up and it showed her tending to the flowers that makes sense i thought I it was the dog i wasn't sure no but... that would make sense and that mm-hmm. has like a black rose above it or whatever yes yeah. exactly um yeah it's it's just definitely one of those things that it just because it doesn't keep a clear line and again i don't expect clear lines because you know it's not like i have to know if it's supernatural or f- fantasy it's just right it's it's both yeah, it's, but yeah, yeah it there's just times where it's not at, woven as nicely yeah, um, yeah absolutely and one thing i will say that i did like is i genuinely thought because the story of the baba duke ended with her killing her child and herself mm-hmm. i genuinely thought that's how the film was going to end yeah yeah I, I, I had a feeling like i feel like this is how it's going to end and so again and if it had ended that way i just feel like okay yep exactly what i expected but just symbolically i like how it went 
story wise i don't like how it went if that makes sense like mm. i like the message at the end and everything it's yeah. just getting there where i'm like mm. oh yeah and another thing you're talking about silly stuff again this is like a minor nitpick this is a me problem once again the dinosaur noise the stock <laughs> dinosaur noise that like flares up anytime the babadook happens i'm like I, I can't take this seriously. Just mm. It just makes me laugh. It's like the Wilhelm scream. Oh, yeah. No matter how many times it's used, I just laugh there just hearing that noise. But, yeah, definitely interesting choice having, like, the dinosaur, like, <laughs> yeah, happen. Um, but one thing I do want to talk about is the Babadook and how Samuel is able to see it and interact it. Cause mm -hmm. supposedly it's supposed to represent depression and everything else like that. Mm -hmm. But, um, it makes me curious as to like why Samuel is depressed at first. The only thing I could think of is the fact that you see Amelia look dead inside 24 seven well, I mean, there, he's... but he's also, he seems like a happy kid at the beginning. So I was just curious on what your thoughts your interpretations were on why he sees the baba duke and screams about it and everything else well i think the film does a decent job mm -hmm. of centering his father's absence and his father's mm -hmm. death as a problem for samuel too that that is a social problem for him i mean his cousin bullies him about not having a dad and says you're not even good enough to have a dad like mm -hmm. um and that's when and this is a part where i'm like was the baba duke in him because i wonder if it would he let it in first or whatever and that's why he pushed her out of the the tree house and was doing all these violent stuff even though he was being told not to it was because the the monster of grief was in him mm -hmm. and that's why he was acting out this whole time mm -hmm. um you know he's he's lonely he's an only child he has to you know he just got kicked out of school for bringing weapons that he brought because he's scared of monsters and nobody believes that these monsters exist except for him um and he feels like an intense need to protect his mother because it's the only family he has left and he's worried that she could just die because mm -hmm. he's six and he doesn't quite understand how death works but he knows that his dad just died one day and so uh, his mom could just die at any moment too and then he'd be really alone so mm -hmm. he's um yeah i feel like he's super grieved from from that aspect and then when he reaches out to his mother to feel comforted every night you know because he's mm -hmm. scared every night or whatever and she's just tired of him and tired of him and pushes him away further because it's like geez give me a fucking second mm -hmm. to sleep um i feel like that's got to take a toll on him too even as a child so that's sort of the vibe i got mm -hmm. from the script yeah as um, to why he would be grief stricken by the baba duke why he would pick that book in the first place and why it would arrive to both of them and haunt both of them or whatever and he seems to have an acute understanding of grief even as a kid by the end of the movie because when mm -hmm. she's strapped down and trying to kill him he's like i know you don't love me right now the babadook won't let you you know what i mean mm -hmm. the babadook i guess kind of in that moment represents like you know where you're so blinded by these emotions and that you're not yourself and mm -hmm. you don't feel what you normally feel you were you would be willing to do the old murder suey kill yourself and your, <laughs> yeah. and your kid um, and then, I mean, that kind of shit happens in mm -hmm. her life. She watched a news story in the thing about like a mother killed her son and, and herself or whatever. And then she saw her reflection in the window or whatever. She's like, that could be you. You could be driven to that edge just with the stresses of work and life and mm -hmm. grief all piled on top of each other. And you just snap in a moment that's uh, a weak moment of yours or whatever. And that's, mm -hmm. I think, what they were kind of trying to pile into this monster of the Baba Duke is like, yeah. And I, I think it's interesting that they. In the beginning of the film, the Babadook is like in this wardrobe, presumably, mm -hmm. that rattles. And every time she wakes up and looks at it, she's looking in a mirror that's positioned in the middle of the wardrobe. Uh, God damn it. <laughs> I'm, having, I'm having a moment of like, dang, that's clever. Yeah, yeah. It's like, and it's, you know, it was one of those things where I was like waiting for horror movie tropes. Like, oh, she's going to see something in the mm -hmm. reflection behind her and she's going to turn around and it's not there or something. But it, the point, that never really happened because the point was... It was her, you know. She is in this. Is the monster is inside of her, and she mm -hmm. can let it in at any moment, you know. Yeah. Well, that that was freaking clever. Very very <laughs> clever. Oh my um, God. Yes. <laughs> That's why they had dinosaurs. Yeah. <laughs> um. Yeah. Um. I there's a there's a lot of moments that I do like that they do in the film like one of my favorite things this is such a small touch is 
whenever you could tell she's just drained at work and again mm. it's just kind of miserable because she takes care of like the elderly and stuff and you know how it is with some elderly they're just going to be just very not fun to deal with yeah. but there's like this moment where basically uh robbie her co-worker's like hey i'll cover your shift you know if you need to head out she's like okay thank you instead of just like heading home she just goes out and has ice cream at a mall yeah. she's just like i need this just i need a moment to be away from anybody for a minute because you mm-hmm. know when you have a kid and you're the sole caretaker you don't really get that you know, you yes a... exactly so i thought that was actually pretty funny that that happened mm-hmm. there um <laughs> um so i i think they do a good job like i said i guess my issue comes with is i was looking at it surface level wise about how strong the kid is acting it's like oh you're supposed to sympathize with the mother mm-hmm. and then towards the end which i have to give like major kudos to um once again se davis whenever she's like in baba duke mode mm-hmm. she's able to just contort her body mm-hmm. and just do things with her voice that in all honesty there's moments of like is she actually sounding like this or did they alter her voice it mm-hmm. just sounds again like you mentioned it you take a still from the beginning to end it doesn't look like the same person yeah. and she just does a great job with that and uh supposedly with um again whenever i was trying to refresh on some uh trivia just learning more about the film apparently whenever she's like berating the kid a lot of times it says you should have been one to die in that car crash not my husband and everything Mm -hmm. uh they didn't have the kid in the room because they didn't want to traumatize him (laughs) because he's six yeah um but she you know i i do like this idea of just again you kind of mention yourself whenever you're just filled with so much awful emotions and everything that Mm -hmm. you just kind of feel like a monster and you're just like i feel like i want to kill Mm -hmm. and everything i think they do a good job of doing that uh throughout the film i was just curious because i was surprised because i was like hmm why would the kids see the babadook first there because uh i i could pick up on what the babadook represented for amelia Mm -hmm. just not so much for samuel however you talking about it i'm like yeah you're totally right you're totally right about that um so yeah man um anything else you want to talk about this film i'm surprised that We've kind of, I feel like we've hit a lot of the main points. Yeah, I do feel like the, I mean, there was a pretty centralized main point that we've been hammering on this whole time. Just, I mean, mm-hmm. it's a pretty, I feel like they don't, you know, necessarily <clears throat> shove it in your face. Like, the Babadook is grief, the Babadook is grief, you know. But the whole movie still rides that line. Mm-hmm. And uh, so we've been kind of hammering on that the whole time. So, I mean, I feel like we covered it pretty well. Um yeah, I guess the only thing I would mention is the fact that whenever the Baba Duke turns into uh, Amelia's spouse that yeah, died, mm-hmm. I feel like it honestly, as as awful and creepy as it sounds, kind of correlates to like, you know, that mentality of like, oh, if we die, we could be happy again, like together. Right. We can go meet them. Yeah, it, it's like almost like seducing her to do awful things right well i mean Mm -hmm. that's and i do think that's um kind of what this film was trying to get at is Mm -hmm. that these monsters are are real monsters that exist Mm -hmm. and it could be anybody that's tempted by that kind of thing and that's what makes it so scary is that most of the time i mean there are like psychopaths out there that are straight out the womb like yeah let's do some murdering Mm -hmm. but for the most time my part people that murder um do it in desperate times in their life they Mm -hmm. do it you know in circumstances of extreme poverty or drug addiction or they do it in circumstances of extreme emotion and anybody has that's the scariest part about Mm -hmm. humanity or whatever is that anybody has the potential to do that if they are um cornered in the wrong circumstances i guess you could say Mm -hmm. but um yeah. And that's sort of what is explored in this film is that a mom goes off the deep end. She can't handle it anymore. And she's going to kill herself and kill her kid. Um, mm-hmm. And from like a zoomed out, if you were talking about the news reporter version of how this movie mm-hmm. could have ended, then that's what it is. But the the kid, I guess, sympathized with that in his weird home alone way and mm-hmm. uh, was able to, to yeah. talk her mom down. But Yeah. And I, I guess, again, I, I know we're just kind of like cherry picking like final pieces and everything else Mm -hmm. one thing i will say i like about uh what they did with samuel's character is whenever they give him the medicine not so much for me be like oh thank god he's not a terror anymore (laughs) but it's just the fact that like a you know it 
kind of does play into the fact that you understand Amelia's sympathy and everything else about mm-hmm. like I need something to help out with this kid. I have not gotten sleep in weeks mm-hmm. there, but at the same point, she just continues like take your pill, and he's just like you know I'm I'm really hungry and whenever she's just kind of tired of it and he's not being hyperactive because again he's drowsy all the dadgum time he's Mm -hmm. been basically drugged that she's still like just horrifically mean so like the reason the reasoning of her like snapping back makes her seem more like the monster Mm -hmm. in that sense because like i'm sure like if you had her respond to uh, Samuel acting like a little terror there, mm-hmm. then you would just understand. You're like, yeah, this woman's like lost it. But whenever it's towards the end of the film and Samuel's doing very benign things. Like asking for food. Yes, oh, yeah. asking for food, you know, and mentioning stuff like that. Um, I think it exemplifies like just both sides of their high end emotions. So, mm-hmm. um, yeah, like I said, I think this film, even though it's not like entirely for me has a lot of good merits and values to it so yeah. it's definitely not like a into the garbage with your babadook right it's just more like you know it, it's not quite for me but there's a lot of stuff i do appreciate so i am glad i watched the film yeah definitely glad i finally got around to it and just gave it some time to cool off from the hype mm-hmm. okay um so Baba Duke down. Yeah, Baba Duke down. All right. Just wanted to make sure there wasn't any other uh, uh, points you wanted to mention with it. I don't think so. Okay. Well, we're going to be jumping over to uh, teasers for our next episode. Woo! And this next episode is going to be exactly 27 episodes from this film that we watched. Okay. And uh, sequel? we're going to be heading back up uh, northeast. The East, uh, you know, where it's been 27 years later since the events happened in this film. Interesting. And same cast of characters there dealing with the same good old antagonist. Uh, you know, it just it's one of them uh, Stephen King things. Mm, are we watching it part yeah. two? Yes, we okay. are watching it part two. Mm. Um, obviously, the one to. Uh, it 2017 mm-hmm. uh, sequel not to be confused with tim curry i'm sorry tim curry we're not trying to put you off you know <laughs> yeah, I, I love old it, timmy but yeah i, I, I love timmy too but I mean, we're going to be watching it too so <laughs> okay all right thank you all nope. so much for listening to this episode and we'll see y'all again next time when we're popping the scary with it part two electric boogaloo <laughs> Babadook, gabagoo. Gabagabadoo. <laughs> Be sure to subscribe to our YouTube, CastBox, or iTunes platforms to stay up to date when new episodes drop. To see what Aaron and I are up to, check out our respective Twitter accounts. For me, it is at ColkirkVA, and for Aaron, it is at AnimalGameDev. Thank you all so much for listening to our podcast. We'll speak to you all again next time when we're popping the scary.